um, for those of you who don't know Louise, Louise and Luke here in the second row, Luke is a federal member for our seat of Petrie here, so I call Louise the First Lady. So she's the First Lady. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's like in America, the President's wife is the First Lady, so Louise is the First Lady. And, um, and she happens to be one of my closest friends, and she's absolutely incredible. And so I thought on Mother's Day, it would be great for us to hear from Louise. And so we've got a couple of photos. Let's put up that family photo. Do you want to, all right, or this guy. So that's the two of us. That was at an event, um, a bit of a relaxed event, actually. I couldn't find a more formal event with no one else in it, actually. It was a bit tricky to find because often we're surrounded by the community, which is part of, you know, the role of Luke being our federal MP and serving others. And then there's another photo with your family. We can pop that one up there, the boys. Oh, no, we need to find that one really quickly. We need to find that really quickly. I sent it through this week to Shakina and Gypsy. So you have three boys just so th dobbing you in. <laughs> so the photo that I sent through um, was on Christmas Day up at my mum's place. My mum's since moved back to Brisbane, but she was in Childers and we're on her back deck. Um, we we're very relaxed. It was very hot. Um, but it was just a nice, relaxed shot of the three boys, um, Will turning 22, Tom just turned 20 on Friday, and Sam turning 18 in July. Awesome. So hopefully we can, whenever you get that, we'll just pop it on the screen. So we have a bit of context for this conversation. Um, and so a little bit about yourself. Just tell us a little bit about maybe how you grew up so that we understand you before we get into the big questions. Sure, thank you. I just want to say thank you for having me, Carolina. I am a little bit nervous. I am a school teacher, so I have notes if I forget something. <laughs> it's like a security thing. Um, and also, a disclaimer, I really appreciate all your beautiful um, comments, but I do not claim to have it all together or have all the right question, uh, all the right answers on motherhood. I'm sure my boys could um, write a short list. Um, I used to say that I need a learner, you know, like an L plate. Um, when they became teenagers, but I'll do my best to share as much as I can. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I have three boys, but I'm actually the eldest of three girls. So um, I was the bossy one of the family. Um, my beautiful mum and dad, we lost my dad um, three years ago, um, but my beautiful mum and dad, I was raised in Banyo, um, in a very big Catholic family. Um, on my dad's side, I had like, I have like 30 plus cousins. Um, my mum's side is quite small, but we were also very close. So my childhood in the 80s, which was the best, um, was full of uh, family, going to church, being part of the church Catholic parish at Banyo, um, catching up with friends, uh, camping, just lots of social connected family um, activities. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we've got some really, like we're going to dive straight in here. Actually, first I'd like to know, just out of interest, who your favourite mother was in the Bible, other than the mother of Jesus? Who's your favourite mother in Scripture? So in the book of Ruth, um, Ruth was the daughter-in-law of Naomi. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I think it was at maybe two SWBs ago, maybe before COVID, um, where I think either you, Carolina, or one of the other speakers was speaking about um, mm. the book of Ruth. So Naomi um, experienced immense tragedy and loss in her life. She lost her husband and her two sons, um, her daughters-in-laws. I think we've got your oh. photo, except it's all the way over there. Oh, there I we go. We can't see it. You can see it. Okay. There they all are. So they <laughs> are the men in your life. They are the men in my life. You're yes. seriously outnumbered. Very much so. I have a female dog. That's That's... Pretty much it all counts. It. Matilda. <laughs> um, so um, back to Naomi. Um, she experienced tremendous loss um, and was really angry with God um, during those times. Uh, I really love in particular uh, the daughter-in-law's love that they had for Naomi, but also the steadfastness that um, Naomi had because at the end, God pulled through. Um, yes. Her daughter-in-law, Ruth, was married um, and she bared a son yeah. um, as the redeemer of her family. So, um, yeah. Just hang in there. Hang in there, absolutely, yeah. and stay yeah. committed to your faith. Yeah. 
So what I love about, uh, so many things I love about you, but um, you're actually one of the most unassuming, genuine, authentic people and just easy to be around, very attentive in conversation. I know you're really intentional with your family, with your boys and your marriage, but just a short list of things that you're involved with. So as well as being a wife and a mum and, you know, a, a Luke's, you know, biggest cheerleader and in the community all the time, you are a teacher, you're a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, a renovator, an Airbnb manager. Um, you are also a social justice advocate and ambassador in community organisations. I don't know if I'm missing anything. But my, am I? No, I think that's it. <laughs> Um, and in all of that, you are still calm and kind and present and kind of just take everything in your stride. And when, like, I know how intentional you are in the home. And so my question to you is, is motherhood and career, are they at odds with one another? Like, how have you managed to be so present and intentional in the home and yet involved successfully in all these other areas in your own right, in your own credibility, you're out there, you're living a full life and doing family. I often hear people say, I just can't juggle it. I can't do both. And a lot of people kind of choose one or the other. Are they at odds? How have you done it? Well, they are at odds. Um, and juggling is a real thing. Um, I think in, in thinking about this answer, I needed to think a little bit more deeply about the season that you find yourself in. So there are different seasons. The season could be one day, the season could be a week, the season could be a month. So, um, yeah, I, I think... Or 18 years or, until they graduate. 18, yeah. Um, so for me, organisation and routine is really, really important. Um, I need to know where everybody is and what they're doing and why they're there. Um, that's really, really, really important. I'm naturally an organised routine person and I like habit and predictability. So those sorts of things come naturally to me. Wow. So um, I, I guess I, st I sometimes have the image of, you know, the duck is on, on the surf, you know, on the lake underneath, like the legs are going, but the duck's sort of going along like this. I do feel like that at many times. I'm sure Luke and the boys would attest to that. Um, but it's all about priorities in that season. So, for example, um, right now, uh, the season, I've stepped back a little bit um, with what I'm doing with work um, so that I can develop another part of my career, but at the same time be present for the boys. I'm finding even though they're older, you still need, I still need to be around when they come home, you know, in between school, going to the gym, uni, uh, you, I still need to be around for them when they decide that they want to have a deep and meaningful chat with me because yeah, if you're not right. there, there's no one for them to talk to. So you can't plan that stuff. Um, so everything else, I've got commitments. I, de I tend to say yes to a lot of things. I've had to learn to sort of streamline what I'm doing and I think I've done better at that this year. So it is a juggle and it, it can be at odds, but then you need to stop and go, well, okay, where am I at and what is my capacity? Um, the other thing I want to say about capacity too, I think our humanness, especially as women, takes over and we feel, we feel like we've got to do it all in our own strength. It's when I start to get in a bit of a, a spiral that I need to stop and go, the Lord's blessed me with all these gifts and talents and all these abilities, and I need to trust in Him. I feel like my life is really full, um, but obviously Lord, the Lord's got something. There's a reason why, why this season is where it is. And then often I get to the other side of it and I go, oh, there you go. That's, that's why it felt like that at that time. Um, because, I mean, it's in all the beautiful songs that we sing, but there is goodness at the end of everything yeah. if if God is with you. Yeah. There's always goodness. You've just got to hang on. I totally attest to that. I think to live a big life, you just have to be organised. Have to be organised. Just for SWB, we had a Google spreadsheet. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with each of the nine members of our family down this way and across this way was like the time and where each particular person was at each particular time of the day. Because just to arrive on Thursday and go, oh, 
we need to do this, is literally impossible. There's no way you can do everything without being organized. So it's huge. And just present to the season, living by priorities and values um, and not being a victim to your life, but living by values and strategy. You are so intentional. I love that. In every conversation, the intentionality that comes through in your life is absolutely amazing. And so I'm just wondering, what are or have been the top three things you wanted to instill in your boys by the time they left home? So I said to Carolina earlier, I, that she gave me a lot of questions, can I say? There was like eight. You might get through. I, I felt yeah. like I was doing an assignment. So I'm actually going to flick to my, which I love, by the way, because I love being organised. I'm actually going to flick to it through because I surveyed the men in my house and I wanted to find out what they thought were the top three things. So I'm going to read them to you. And I must say that I was I was quite impressed with the mix. There was definitely a mix. And then I got Luke to chime in at the end to, to try and wrap it all up. So Will, my eldest, who's the only one that's left home, by the way, he's been out of home since he turned um, 18 and a half. He's about to turn 22. He's in the Defence Force. So Will said to me that the top three things were faith, looking after friends and a work ethic. Tom, who is just turned 20, still living at home, but independent uni student. Um, his was interesting. His first one was Harry, how to carry yourself in life. Wow. So they were his direct words. I thought that was really inspiring for him to come up, you know, be able to phrase that. The second one was organisation. But can I say, Tom is sort of after his mama. He, he's very organised and routine and he works like clockwork. So I, I was expecting that one to, to come up. And then the last one for Tom was how to be caring. Wow. Now, Sam, my, my soon-to-be 18-year-old, who hasn't left home yet, again, we'll get to the uniqueness and individuality of the men in my life. Yes. Sam's were be smart, <laughs> be kind. He's a bit of a, a character, my Sam. And come home every now and then. <laughs> That, that's his view, so that when he leaves home, be smart, be kind. Oh, yeah, I'll come home every now and then. So that's a real testament to his, um, his, his very chill, relaxed personality, um, which is completely different to the other two. So Luke shared that when the boys were younger, routine. So we were very routine, probably a little bit too much routine for their liking sometimes, but it paid, paid off well. Um, and then now Luke's top three was doing your best, open communication, and of course, biblical principles. So, awesome. yeah, I'd probably How did say you mix feel of those. after hearing all those. Well, things? I was actually quite impressed because sometimes I was when you impressed with myself, I was <laughs> because you know we were talking before when you you do mothering and loving and and everything, and there's a lot of giving and outpouring, and then every now and then your kids come out with these nuggets you know, and, and it comes back to you a bit, as a bit of feedback. You don't often get a lot of feedback, but I really liked having, it was like a bit of an audit yes. as to where I was, how I was going yes. um, on the parenting mothering scale. Yeah, so, it's kind of like when you say something and then you say, now you repeat back to me what you think you just heard. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So I actually enjoyed going through these, these questions yeah. just to see where they're at and going, are there any gaps that I need to fill? There was a few gaps that I'm sure we'll get to in a moment about the whole <laughs> wife thing. But um, it was a really, it was a really good, it was a really great exercise. And they were more than happy. They they sat for a moment, and thought deeply, and then they shared. Mm. So mm. it was good. And so you've mentioned like how unique and individual and different each of your boys are. And so you obviously went on a steep learning curve because you were raised in a home of girls, and now you have three boys. And then being a mother is quite a, an incredible privilege where. Wow, they're all so different. How is it possible to have three completely different humans um, coming from the same parents? So what do you love the most about motherhood and celebrating the opportunity to raise and nurture and steward three completely different individuals? I think just put simply, when I was thinking about this question, um, Love just came to mind. Like, I just have so much love in my heart for my boys. It's like, you know, you couldn't bottle it. I'd need a gigantic bottle for it. So your heart actually, I feel like my heart bursts and hurts so much because I just love them so much. So the love just covers over everything. So when you approach your relationship with your kids and, and the parenting, 
with, with love, I mean, you think about how much God loves us and God's outpouring, my relationship with God, he, the amount of love He outpours on me. Right. I feel it just flows right. to my children, um, to the boys in particular. So first and most simply, love. I think for me, the boys are really, they're very connected to me. So some of the notes I made were like, for example, every time we part ways, you know, I'll get a hug, love your mum, or a text, there's always a love your mum, or some sort of emoji. Um, I know it's a small gesture, but for me, especially being a mum and boys, where there's not a lot of words thrown around, it is different. Um, It's not a very chatty, high volume household. Um, It can be at times, but those small gestures, I feel like they just fill up our love tanks like all the time. It keeps connection. It does. It? So that when we get to the rough stuff yeah. and the hard stuff, we've got this solid foundation of love that I feel like then I can sit down and have those really hard conversations or broach those subjects that you don't really want to broach with them, but you need to talk to them about some things. Um, so love just straight up really flows easily for me with the boys. Um, Their uniqueness and their individual um, personalities, honestly, I think for years, because they're all close together, I felt like I was just raising like a group of boys for like so long. And I think William went off to high school, he was 13, and it got really hard all of a sudden. I remember saying to Luke going, oh my gosh, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. And I feel like, you know, he went off to high school and then he sort of started to, I mean, they're all individual to start with, but it was very noticeable as they got through those teens and it got really hard because I'm like, well, this this didn't work for this one and now I've got to in tune, be more in tune with this one. And so you really need to develop that individual relationship, which I think is what we've been doing the last couple of years is really building an individual relationship with each of our boys um, that way you're able to approach things that they're going to respond to. You know, the, the strategies you use for one child may not work for another child. Yeah. Um, and you don't know that until you try it. Yeah. Um, and you need to stop if it doesn't yeah. work <laughs> because yes. you're not getting anywhere. Yeah. So you go, well, where do we go now? And try and develop on another level with them. And just having, like, you have a family code. There are some things that are just non-negotiable in the family. But then that awesome privilege of, I need a strategy for you. So there's this overarching sense of who we are as a family that applies to everybody. But who are you and how has God made you? And I always think of that, that passage where Mary is watching Jesus and she's watching him as a 13-year-old And it says in scripture, she tucked it away in her heart. And I feel like that's what a mother does the whole way through her children's lives. Is like, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to tuck that away and breathe on that in prayer and watch that and nurture that. Is that indicative of who you're going to be and what God's put inside you? Those little moments that are like giveaway moments. What I love as you're speaking is... It's as though the, the boys and your marriage and your family is your whole world. It is. And yet you're doing all these other things. True. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I think that to me that inspires me. That inspires me. I think when things are in the right order, order flows. And, um, and yeah, just to keep the main thing the main thing. And we've been entrusted with family, and family is the building block of everything else. So important, so powerful. So I just love that about you. I absolutely love that intentionality at home, that home is not at the expense of all these other incredible things that you can put your hand to. Okay, so I'm wondering, what have you taught your sons to look for in a wife? This was the tricky question. So I did another survey and it turns out that I haven't really touched on the whole what to expect when you in a wife, um, which really threw me because it was a very self-reflective process. Um, and my answer is, I feel like for me personally, I, I can sometimes, well, obviously, I've been caught up in modelling, providing an environment, providing opportunities, providing connection and that, that 
that um, loving environment for the boys that I actually haven't stopped and had a, a full on let's just start talking deliberately an intentional conversation. And I was saying before to Carolina, with your kids, you feel like you, you've, you're playing catch up sometimes. They like stretch ahead in their their growth and their journey and development. You feel like you're running after where they're at. And I love what you said this morning, Cam, you know, that when we are raising kids, but we're also raising adults. And, you know, I've got to realise that mine are 18, 20 and 22. So adulthood is like right here now. Um, so there are some things that I that we need to talk more specifically about, like, um, you know, what does a healthy marriage look like? What does it sound like? Um, our boys have, have seen, you know, models of marriage already in my parents before my dad passed. Um, Luke's parents, you know, they've seen and heard uh, marriages that don't work and have also, you know, um, you know, fallen away. So I guess, yeah, there will be, the, we'll, we'll, we will need to have conversations about you what always, that means. I've heard you say so many times that I'll be my son's first love. Yes. I am. Yeah. Still am. And there's like a devastating heartbreak coming your way, right? When, when he finds... When I'm, I'm the yeah. mother of the groom, yeah. not mother of the bride, I'm guessing. It's like a breakup. It is. Well, yeah. speaking of breakup, when William left me and us <laughs> to go and pursue a career in the military, we were so, again, I think this is what's happened. You're so focused on preparing them and getting them emotionally socially and physically ready for this big change in their life mm. that we forgot about, well, what does that look like for us and what was the, the family of five that's mm. not a family of five anymore? And we got completely blindsided. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, we were blubbering and crying and for like a weeks and our family are checking and going, are you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> why didn't you tell us this was going to happen? Like, we honestly were blindsided and honestly um, – so I won't talk about it, but Will did fly home this afternoon. Just as well I was preparing for this because the last time he came home, um, Luke said to me, you know, are you going to cry? I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. And then he drove off around the corner and then I turned around and I just fell apart. So it's the third, fourth year that he's been in Canberra and I still miss him greatly. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, it's a slow divorce with boys sometimes. What was the question? Well, I mean... <laughs> I also grew up as the oldest of three girls and I remember when I found out I was pregnant with Judah and it just hit me like a ton of bricks and I was like, I am going to set the standard for him of what to expect in a wife. And I was like, whoa, I really need to up my game. I need to up my game. It is and I think... Um I mean, being a woman can be really hard sometimes, um, you know, with the things that we're juggling, um, you know, the way that God made us without going into detail. Um, <laughs> and we're emotional creatures, you know. And I think, you know, I've tried, while I've, I haven't necessarily shied away from that, but I want my boys to know that sometimes we don't have it all together. Yeah. We're not super women. Yes. You know, we, everyone, the culture tells us we can have it all. And well, we sort of can. But at the same time, you know, being, being a mum, for me, being a mum and a wife and being connected with my family, that's always, and obviously my relationship with God, that is always number one. And it may not feel like it sometimes or look like it sometimes, but I know in my heart that is exactly where it needs to be. So when it comes to a potential wife with our boys, um, you know, I hope they will reflect on on the marriage that they've seen with yeah. Luke and I, which is also, also goes through seasons. Yeah. I mean, we're 25 years married this year, but there's so many seasons, you know, that you go through with your children, young children, you know, mm -hmm. teenage children, a marriage with adult children. So the wife one, yeah, I'm all up for any any recommendations from the audience there on what to <laughs> what to. <laughs> what to um, expect with our boys, but we will definitely need to have chats to them about what that looks like. And I hope that I can continue to love them. And they, they know the loving feeling that it is from me, that that's that, that love feeling and the, the importance of love um, in their marriage. Mm. It is corny, but love does conquer all. 
Yes, I remember I had two things on my list, what to look for in a husband. Two. One was, I mean, a Christian was a given. But beyond that, I wanted in a husband a man who was leading in the church and serving in the church. And so I was looking for that. And then the second thing was um, that he had family as a priority. Those two things. Obviously, you know, good with money, that sort of thing, those sorts of things. But majoring on, you're not just paying God lip service or raising your hands on a Sunday. You are actively serving in the house of God, in the church family. You're in some form of self-sacrificial leadership in the church. And family is a priority. How does he talk about his mother? How does he talk about his sisters and brothers? How does he support his family? How much time does he spend with his family? What level of respect does he show for his family? And if those two things checked out, then maybe you pass the first test. So um, there's so m- everything's a test. Everything's a test. Any? Do you want to add to that? Oh, all of that. I think one of the questions was what to look for, you know, in a husband. Definitely men of faith, um, and the the significant relationships. You know, not not everyone is going to have that. I guess. And my boys have realised too, I guess, in growing up, that relationship that I have with my boys um, is really different to some of the relationships that their friends have with their mums and even their families. That It's very obvious to them at times. So if you just think about it logically, if he's bagging out his mother, he's going to do that to you. Exactly. If he can't respect his father, that's a bad sign. It's actually a bad sign. So it's all those sort of things that, you know, someone can sweet talk you and buy you flowers and say all the right things in the first six months or year or whatever. But what's the fruit of their life? The fruit of their life. It's those significant relationships Mm. and and especially the the female relationships, whether it's, you know, an aunt or a grandmother if if, if their mum isn't there. But um, yeah, the significant relationships and what they do with their time. You know, have they got a kingdom heart? Are they serving? Yes. What they do with their time. Yes, and And because their time is a a giveaway. What are they doing? Are they gaming all the time? Or just sometimes? (laughs) What are they doing in spare time? We could go on and on about that, um, but we shall not. Um, And just one last question is um, a double prong question. What is it that only a mother can bring to the home and that only a father can bring to a home? I was looking into this and I always resort back to um, the biblical text, you know, um, a mother, that that innate passion of protection and duty and care and for a father, Um, that spiritual leadership of the home um, and also, you know, in honouring God in our relationships, you know, we're actually loving and caring for our children um, at the same time. So I always, yeah, resort back to what, what it says in the Bible. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. I feel like a big, big heart-wrenching gap right now for all the people in the room who haven't had that mother in the home or that father in the home, for all the people who haven't had the model of marriage to look up to, the model of family to look up to. And so I just wanted to address that and just say that church family fills so many gaps. I know for me, I came from a broken home and I had no idea what a functional marriage looked like. No idea. Had no idea. All I actually had was an example of brokenness. But I came into the church family and I was adopted into other families. And actually, I probably adopted myself into families. And that's the thing. Don't wait. Don't play the victim going, no one's looking out for me. No one. Just insert yourself into people's lives. Can I tell you that a phone works two ways? Don't wait for the phone call make the phone call like let's get over this victim no one cares about me insert yourself into the right families and the right relationships but I definitely learned so much in church family 
And church family for a lot of people becomes the family you wish you had. And it becomes the family that you become whole with. And so I want to encourage you, don't think, well, I didn't have that. I didn't either. Don't think, oh, I don't know what that looks like. I didn't either. But it's available. And that's why the church is God's genius plan. And church is not, as Cam says all the time, not a service we attend, but a people we belong to. And so the beautiful model of family is all around us here, right here. And so insert yourself into that and also adopt others in. If you have that to offer, bring them in because there's a generation who doesn't know and hasn't seen it. So can we give it up for Louise? Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luke. Thank you for being resolute about your faith in the nation and in our community. Um, I love following Luke and Louise around in the community because they're just actually secular pastors. I mean, you can't walk five metres without Luke stopping and having a deep conversation with the person right in front of him. So we honour you. We thank you for who you are. I'm so excited that God's got you where He's got you. We're praying for you, believing for you always. We love you so much. So church, why don't we just stand to our feet tonight? Stand to our feet tonight. is the end of Mother's Day and um, significant day in culture where we recognise mums. And I understand that it touches us in different ways. Everyone has a story. You know, and you might be at a rift with your mum. You might have lost your mum. You know, you might have a great mum. Whatever it is, we lean into the Lord and we lean into His plan and His purposes. And so in Him, we find all the wholeness we need. He's the ultimate gap filler. Amen? Amen. Well, this, just as we started the service tonight, Jared shared this one phrase about that the love of God actually meets us and comes after us. The challenge is on our end to relent to His love. And so just in a room like this, I know that there are going to be people here and you're withstanding, you're resisting, maybe you're not in that place with the Lord, relenting to the Lord's love. Isn't that a beautiful term? To relent to His love. Maybe you know the Lord in a measure, but for some reason, you actually just need to relent completely. Relent completely to His love, where the healing is, where His power is. So why don't we just bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. On this Mother's Day in 2024, I'm wondering if there's anyone here that just needs to relent to the love of the Lord. And while heads are bowed, if that's you, why don't you just raise your hand and say, I actually need to give in to that beautiful love that is available to me tonight. And as I look across, if I see your hand, I'll know who to pray with tonight. Thank you. I see your hand. Anybody else here tonight? Maybe you know him in a measure. Thank you. I see your hand. It's powerful. Maybe you've opened the door a little bit and he's going, no, no, no. All of it. Tonight, you need to relent. Is that you? Give me a wave as I look across one last time. Thank you. I see your hand. It's beautiful. The fullness of Christ. Lord Jesus, I thank you, God. I saw three hands that boldly went up. God, but you saw hearts opening. And I thank you, God, for your love that comes in like a flood. I thank you that all our answers are found in you and you alone. Father God, for all of us, we come with a bag of experiences. We come with a bag of hurt and, and all sorts of things that have shaped us into the person that we are now. But under your relentless love, God, all things are made new. All things are made right because of Jesus. And so I ask, Lord God, today that your presence would be so manifest in these ones, Lord, that have turned their hearts open to you and your relentless love. So, Father God, we thank You for the gift of salvation that was made possible through the Son. Lord God, for Your love that came chasing after us. Father, I thank You that You are in our past, our present, and our future. And so today, we surrender our future to Your leadership, to Your guidance, to Your ways. And so, Father, for these ones that have opened their hearts, Lord God, committing themselves into Your love, 
into your hands. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Father God, we thank you that you wash us white as snow. We thank you that we rightfully take that place with you as sons and daughters, the place that you had reserved for us since the beginning of time. Lord God, coming into your family, I pray for a hedge of protection around these decisions, that it wouldn't just be a decision on the 12th of May, but it would be the start of a lifelong journey in the direction of Jesus, Lord, experiencing you being transformed by your power in your spirit. So we thank you today. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Can we give some some praise to the Lord for the gift of salvation tonight? Amen. Thanks for joining us online. We pray you are blessed by today's message. If you want prayer for anything, you want to connect with us, or you made a commitment to Jesus today, we'd love to take this from a digital to a personal relationship. So reach out via the link in the description below. Be blessed. We'll see you soon.